Tomorrow will be the 36th anniversary of our marriage. My wife passed from this life one year and eight months ago in Florence, Italy, after an unbroken illness of 22 months duration. I saw her first in the form of an ivory miniature in her brother Charlie's stateroom in the steamer Quaker City in the Bay of Smyrna in the summer of 1867 when she was just in her 22nd year. I saw her in the flesh for the first time in New York in the following December. She was slender and beautiful and girlish, and she was both girl and woman. She remained both girl and woman to the last day of her life, under a grave and gentle exterior, burned an inextinguishable fire of sympathy, energy, devotion, enthusiasm, and absolutely limitless affection. She was always frail in body, and she lived upon her spirit, whose hopefulness and courage were indestructible. Perfect truth, perfect honesty, perfect candor were qualities of her character which were born with her. Her judgments of people and things were sure and accurate. Her intuitions almost never deceived her. In her judgments of the characters and acts of both friends and strangers, there was always room for charity, and this charity never failed. I have compared and contrasted her with hundreds of persons, and my conviction remains that hers was the most perfect character I have ever met, and I may add that she was the most winningly dignified person I have ever known. The love which she bestowed upon those whom she loved took the form of worship, and in that form it was returned, returned by relatives, friends, and the servants of her household. It was a strange combination which wrought into one individual, so to speak, by marriage, her disposition and character, and mine. She poured out her prodigal affections in kisses and caresses, and in a vocabulary of endearments whose profusion was always an astonishment to me. I was born reserved as to endearments of speech and caresses, and hers broke upon me as the summer waves break upon Gibraltar. I was reared in that atmosphere of reserve. As I have already said, I never knew a member of my father's family to kiss another member of it, except once, and that of the deathbed. And our village was not a kissing community. The kissing and caressing ended with courtship along with the deadly piano playing of that day. <laughs> she had the heart through laugh of a girl. It came seldom, but when it broke upon the ear, it was as inspiring as music. I heard it for the last time when she had been occupying her sickbed for more than a year, and I made a written note of it at the time, a note not to be repeated. <laughs> <laughs>